Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we've got this uh, unexpected repair. This uh, is a uh, small bandsaw. It's pretty old, it's probably from the 1970s. And uh, it does actually kind of work, but uh, having just acquired this for a fairly low price, it does of course need a fair amount of uh, refurbishment and uh, fixing up. So uh, we'll just have a quick look at it and uh, see what we've got and then have a look inside and see uh, what's actually not working with it. So here it is, it's a uh, Burgess BBS 20. This is the Mark II version, I presume there was a Mark I as well, but uh, we don't have that or have any information on that. Fairly small thing as you can see, it's a fairly lightweight item. Blade there, main switch uh, on here. And just turn it around, there's the electric motor and just the cord going into the side, painted in this sort of bronzy, horrible colour. Just plug it in and see if it uh, will actually go. Unsleeved pin plug, probably from the 1970s. So, so turn it on. So just obviously unplugged before uh, opening. Now this was presumably a fairly common model at the time and uh, there's a various uh, people on the internet wanting to get the instruction manual for this. I do not have the instruction manual so don't bother asking. And let's face it, uh, what was he going to tell you anyhow? It's fairly self-explanatory. So there's your front cover, just the three sort of uh, twist fixings to remove it. So inside then we've got the three wheels, uh, this uh, blade of unknown quality. It, uh, it does appear to cut a moderate amount, so uh, one, two and three. The uh, motor is actually uh, driven from a belt here onto the bottom wheel. And you'll see the motor comes through here on this uh, belt, just drives this bottom one. And the blade just rides against the outside of the belt there. Just around this one, the top one, and then comes down through the middle of the table here. Now we have got the blade guides in here and also the two under the table, but they are extremely dirty. And you can see this is full of... Uh, sawdust and goodness knows what else. But no, that's all the parts are actually there, so uh, it should be reasonably easy to get this into a better working condition. As you can see, the belt is, uh, or the band rather, is extremely loose. There's really uh, no tension to speak of in it. This is supposed to be the tensioner knob on the top, which moves this up and down, but uh, although the knob does turn, it doesn't appear to do a great deal. So even turned in, it's still uh, incredibly sloppy. Here's a view from the side, we've got the blade here, and these are the two guides which are adjustable. This whole uh, piece is uh, somewhat uh, loose and uh, flappy. Let's tighten that up, it may be uh, improved, so yeah, so it's better. So just basically got two here, one uh, on each side. So it's a fairly basic uh, arrangement. And if we uh, just turn it around there, See, this front one is basically just a plastic roller. It's got a bit of a gouge in it. And then the back one is uh, fairly similar. So it's just basically one against the front, one against the back. And there is a slot in the back one, which presumably is supposed to hold the blade in this direction. But as you can see, it's not obviously engaged at the moment. Uh, have a look under the table. Again, it's just these two bits here. There's a sort of a roller piece on the front. And then the back has some sort of uh, slot with a some sort of decomposed rubber or fabric piece in it. So again, they will need uh, properly adjusting. This is where the motor comes through. It's just got this sort of toothed uh, thing here. And the tooth belt goes over the top. The wheel is actually smooth, so it just drives around. And then the blade actually goes on top of the actual rubber belt on the smooth side. That's what's providing the drive for that. And the other wheels over here and at the top are just bare plastic. This one is fixed and the top one has got some adjustment on it, say for the tension and the uh, angle as well. And uh, this appears to be cast aluminium. It's reasonably substantial in the back here. Main switch uh, here, just a basic on and off deal. And then just the flex uh, coming out here. This is uh, PVC flex, so there's probably nothing terribly wrong with that plug there with the unsleeved pins, again that was common at the time because sleeve pins didn't come in till the mid-1980s and this is clearly somewhat older than that. 
on the back here we've got these adjustment knobs. This one is for the blade guide here, which can be adjusted in two various heights there. And that just clamps in against the side. This one is the tilt of the upper roller there, or the wheel. And so this is supposed to be the tension, although I think this has been over tightened here, so it's basically now locked in a single position. It's obviously not ideal, but that can all be fixed there. But so the main thing here is we have got all of the components, because obviously getting spares for something this age is going to be next to impossible. Here's the motor here, and uh, flex is say PVC, so not a problem with that. Probably just fan uh, cooled here, lost a bit of dust and dirt got inside, so probably take that off later and clean that. And the uh, casing itself, I mean, it's got a bit of chips here on the bottom, but uh, generally the paint and so on is all intact. This looks to be uh, aluminium or something similar. So it's not solid, it's hollow underneath, so it's uh, sort of two or three millimetres thick, I suppose. But, uh, again, that all seems to be present and correct. And so this isn't too bad, it's a bit wonky when it's loose, but it does tighten up fairly well. The whole thing is uh, a bit wonky, but uh, that may be improved later. Right, here's the blade, just taking it out, so there's no real tension here, so uh, not uh, particularly difficult to get out. Uh, this is fairly rusty in certain areas, so I presume it's been in there for quite some time. But uh, we're getting a new blade anyhow. This looks to be a quarter inch, and it's a fairly fine pitch. I think that's fine, that's the kind of thing that we'd want anyhow. So uh, that's the old blade. Now this is the uh, say guide here, and it's actually also part of the blade guard as well, so I think I'll just uh, remove the whole thing from there. It's just one of these sort of wheels with the threaded insert. A little washer that's a bit corroded, that plate comes off of there. And then the whole thing just pulls away like that, so it's basically this uh, hexagonal piece that goes in the side of that plate over the top to hold it. And then the two guards here at the bottom, you see it's just a couple of, uh, well there's like a nylon or some sort of plastic roller there. And then at the back here we've got this uh, thing with a moving piece here and some kind of decomposed cloth type thing on the back. So obviously we need to clean those up. And then just the guard is uh, riveted on over the top. So get rid of those. Now this is the table and it does appear to have the tilt arrangement, so if we can undo these then it presumably will tilt in various directions, though uh, certainly in the uh, bunky arrangement there, so again, I think we'll just remove these completely. It's just a wing nut and a washer basically onto two threaded studs there, so Again, we'll just undo that, remove those two, and then the whole thing just lifts away. So, uh, single trunnion at the bottom, it's all cast, what it looks like aluminium. A little uh, plastic insert plate in the middle. So, just two threaded studs here. I've got this thing here, which is presumably to uh, provide a level when it's in the zeroed or flat position. It appears to be just a disc with a single screw to fix it in position. Now here are the lower actual blade guides and looks to be very similar to the upper arrangement. We've got this one here with a plastic roller and then this one behind which has a sort of metal piece with a groove and then it's got this decomposing fabric-y, rubbery type thing at the back and again it's just the two uh, twisting screws there to move them within this slot. This presumably does the height or at least uh, did do before that massive screw was placed in there. Get it open with that maybe, but yeah again it's just the usual sort of sliding arrangement so height obviously when it's flat and uh, on the tilt it would obviously be uh, lower down. So again I think we'll just remove that completely so it's the same kind of handle as for the others. We also have this just an old bolt there or screw with a washer behind it and uh, goes into the thing above and that's just a sliding thing pretty much uh, over the top of that. And that actually leaves with the uh, main wheel here at the bottom. So it's driven direct from the uh, belt here off of the motor spindle. 
The envelope doesn't look too bad though. It's going to be an easily replaceable item. It's just going to be a question of the length and the width. Main power switch there in its own box. Rear wheel here, and of course the top wheel uh, at the top here. Now this wheel, uh, it's just got a stud on the back, which is totally flat. So presumably on the front this will open. So the wheel turns independently of the middle, so you would imagine that just unscrews. Which it does. So let's see what we have then. So uh, yeah, it's just a threaded piece in the metal there. And then here. So there's an actual washer there or something. No, that's just plastic. So it's just a basic plastic wheel on this piece here with the uh, middle steel bit there. Little clip over the end just to uh, secure that in position. So uh, pretty much just right on the plastic against the metal there. So we'll clean all that up obviously and uh, put some new lubrication on that. That just basically bolts in there. Now this one will be presumably the same because again it's just the little stud on the back. So again, if we undo just here. Yeah, and exactly the same as the other, so it's just that single piece there. It's got this circle around the top, which presumably keeps the uh, wheel against the actual bearing there rather than uh, coming up to where the screw head is. And again, that just threads in there. And I presume the bit on the back is just a little cover, so uh, when they presumably made it, they through drilled it and uh, plastic thing on the back to fill up the hole. So again, exactly the same. That one, it's, it's pretty uh, caked up with the dust. So this is the belt here. It looks a fairly standard sort of thing. I'll say toothed on one side, flat on the back. It does seem to have a bit of a ridge there where the blade has been riding in that. But again, that's a fairly uh, standard sort of belt. So it's just a question of finding the length and the width. So uh, it should be fairly easily obtainable. Although this one uh, seems to work. So I could probably keep that one. Motor spindle there, this is plastic as well. And again, just goes straight through onto the motor at the back. And that's just with the top wheel, which again is uh, obviously on this sort of tilting deal with this knob on the back, so you can arrange the angle of it so the blade stays in place. But again, it's probably the same as the others, so if we uh, just undo here. So uh, there we have it. So again, it's this uh, same kind of, well, bearing in a fashion type of arrangement, uh, exactly the same as the others. You do have a washer on the back of that one. So this is the tilt arrangement. The actual wheel screws into this piece, and then uh, this bit on the top is supposed to be the tension, which should slide up and down. But uh, unfortunately, all that's happening is the knob is uh, moving, and the central piece is not. And then on the back here we've got this other knob which will turn and essentially it's just moving this whole assembly in and out on a tilt so it's pivoting here and then this is basically sort of tilting like that to uh, give the various angles. So this is the back, that's the tilt adjustment, uh, that's uh, probably been over tightened which is why it's seized, it should slide vertically in that groove there. And you turn the top. So we'll just uh, undo this. Right, well, already that's a bit looser there, so this thing here should now slide in some fashion, which it apparently does. Yeah, that's uh, certainly better. Interesting to note that this was all sort of wound almost up to the top position where it was previously. So that's kind of where it was and the blade was still horribly loose so maybe that blade is actually the wrong length. And it's obviously if it's too long then you'll be, never be able to tension it considering it can go all the way down to the bottom of that slot then uh, so it may well have done the incorrect blade altogether. But so we're getting a new one anyway so it doesn't really matter. So just taking the nut and the 
wash off the back. This looks like it was a locking nut at one time. It's got the extra top bit on it, but it appears that the threads now go all the way through. So it's not going to be doing a great deal of locking there. This comes out of the middle here. So again, it's just those two belong together with that. And then this whole piece should come out. So again, if we undo this threaded knob here, single casting, a spring on that side, and then on the top we've got the knob, a large washer, and the small washer. And this knob just seems to thread into the casting here with a spring on the back to provide a bit of tension there. So again we we'll just take that out. Yeah, so it's just another knob with a thread installed, a little spring there which uh, just provides a bit of tension on the back there and that just threads through this and that's what just basically pushes on the tilt piece on the other side. So that just leaves us with the main frame and got these thread uh, studs coming out of here. Not sure if those have been uh, riveted in or what there. These appear to be threaded in here but uh, we can leave those in there they're not really doing a great deal so that's just a little disc for the table adjustment or the sort of locked height there. Let's just see if we can uh, do that. Yeah, so it's literally just a little aluminium disc that can position appropriately so that when the table's flat it will just uh, rest down against that and obviously be in the level position. So uh, nothing uh, too surprising with that. I think we'll take that off anyway because it gets in the way when cleaning. Yeah, just a threaded screw there, aluminium plate and a little hole for it. These seem to go in here. We've got this other piece here, which is presumably the pointer for the actual angle of the table, although the pointer seems to be very loose there, but it seems that the actual screw is fairly tight, so that may just need a washer behind it. The table is actually marked here, it's a bit indistinct with the various angles on that, but uh, it's only marked every five degrees anyway, so we're not talking about a high precision piece of equipment. Now this is riveted down here, so obviously we'll be leaving that. These screws here are just for some uh, rubber feet on the underside, so again we'll just remove those. So just a sort of rubber foot there with a spider included. And that should literally just thread straight into the rubber material. They look to be reasonably sound, so it's fine. So I'll just remove the others uh, the same way. Now I've got this uh, electrical uh, switch here, which uh, will be uh, just undoing this screw. And presumably another one underneath. So just two screws there holding it into the frame. Just with little uh, short things there. This is the inside and yep, it's just a basic on-off switch. Got our earth uh, connection here. Wires coming through from the back. Obviously for the motor and the incoming flex. And then the motor presumably mounts from, the, from this side. So we've got a screw here at the bottom. Now this is in a slot which is presumably to arrange the tension of the belt if necessary. So it's obviously moving a, sort of across there so you could uh, tighten up the belt if needed. So that comes out there. So we've got a uh, plain washer and a spring or star type washer on the back. And then we've got another one at the top here. Yep, and that is all that holds the motor in, just those two bolts there. So again, the same deal there, just got a single plane washer on that one. And then the motor should just lift through the back, which 
which it does. We can now get to that other bit for the flex grip there. Plastic basically with the two screws securing it. So the motor is released, okay, it comes with the spindle fits through the hole, and then we've just got our electrical wiring which just goes through this little hole with a grommet to the actual switch piece here on the back. Here's the back of the switch, it's basically just the main lead comes through to the switch, and then the wires go through to the motor, earth connection just on the side frame over there. Now those look like spade uh, push-on jobs, so uh, should be able to get in there with some pliers and just uh, pull those off and then remove this assembly complete. Yeah, so it's just a normal switch, uh, it is illuminated, uh, looks to be double pole in there. Got the uh, terminals there, so two on each side basically, and uh, say illuminated in red just to snap fit into this plastic housing. So to get out, just press down those two tabs and then the thing should push forward out of the front. So it just pops out like that. So what we've got left then is the motor, which is this two core flex, because it's earth is via the frame of the equipment. And then our incoming flex here, this gray uh, PVC job with the two uh, conductors there and the earth goes over to the stud on the side. So I'm just going to do the earth terminal here. This appears to be a seven millimeter. And it's just a nut over a uh, another threaded stud that's been fitted in the side of the aluminium casing there. A locking washer and a flat washer underneath. This appears to be just wire twisted around, which is a bit shitty considering that they went to the bother of having crimped on terminals and didn't bother to put a ring terminal on that. So we can just pull that through the grommet there, and then the motor wires will go through likewise. And we'll just push out this grommet as well. That looks to be about a 20 millimeter or similar so we'll be yeah, probably replacing that because this is a bit it's always intact but certainly a bit gungy and uh, not necessarily the best thing to continue using. Now it's several hours later and I've actually cleaned up all of the uh, various components so uh, much uh, cleaner and nicer than they were previously and got all that disgusting congealed grease out of that uh, slide mechanism which is why it was sticking and not working properly and I've also cleaned up all of the small components uh, here they're on this tray so all uh, decently sorted and the wheels and everything else as well. Now this is this sort of currently uh, goldy kind of 1970s beige colour uh, so uh, while well, it's all dismantled, uh, obviously opportunity to repaint it, because what else is it going to be repainted? So uh, I'm actually going to uh, refinish all of this, uh, both sides and uh, also the motor as well. What colour that's going to be will be revealed next time, and until then, thanks for watching.